I took a short break, but let me tell you, I'm really enjoying this game. Let, let me, um, over in Hal Alula, I want to place a Plasgreet factory because this is a special region which gets 100% Plasgreet factory resource production. So that's quite helpful. Um, it would be kind of a good idea if I found maybe some more special regions. Let's see, we have obviously the Polar Sink. That's worth a thousand hedge money. Um, but I'm not seeing... Oh, we do have the Great Volcano over here. This would give me extra fuel cell factory production, so I would like to make my way down here. And I think that's kind of the general direction of my expansion. I am kind of dipping into the center, but I'm not sure how I feel about going much further into the center. I guess I could make... Yeah, they're pillaging here. I guess if I went for Har Asek and I went for the center, I could go for like a big water play. It'd be kind of an interesting move. I would have to turn the center into a fortress, essentially. I would put two turrets here, I would get an air base, I would do all that sort of stuff. And I think that might be the play long term. But otherwise, I think I think we're quite happy to just continue to chill. Like, we're building up a, a great economy. We have an incredibly good stockpile of uh, resources. We have, like, incredibly good income. We would, Like, we'll be able to soon um, build more economy buildings in our main base. My Plascrete income is a little bit low in my opinion. I think intel wise, it might be worth my while to consider thinking about, am I going to go for Chom shares? I think I would like to do more political audits. So getting enough influence to do that and maybe tanking a couple of Landsrad's councils would be the right move. Oh, wow. So the unit upkeep got blocked. Unit power went through. Well, that's kind of sad. There is a new council in six days. We will get announced. Yeah, I'm tempted to take it control of the mid. Because if I had control of mid, that's a thousand hegemony. Which really kind of like pushes you into, if not like victory. Ooh, the red chasm. That'd be kind of fun to control. The desolation. Yeah, if not into victory, at least in the direction of victory. Plus there's like a huge amount of water available here that I could uh, really make use of. All right, so we're making crazy amounts of plazcrete. Let's come into Arakeen. And I think I would like to go for the statecraft bonus here, the level three to get Landsrad production. I think that would be powerful. And I think I'm going to go for the embassy first because that's worth, uh, that's worth an extra two influence per turn or per, per tick or whatever. And it'll also give me more money. And, uh, it'll also kind of push me in the direction of wanting to be friendly with people because the better my relationship with these people are, the, the, oh, no, I'll be in a good no. position. Now, my question is, if we did a trade agreement and I offered you, you really want some spice. Like, let's say I offered you like a good old chunk of spice, right? I'm, I'm real. I'm in bribery mode. Uh, like I gave you like a hundred spice with this contract, right? That we're going to go into a trade agreement. How would you feel about that one? I confirm the deal. Does he accept? Trade is accepted. Okay, that's good. And now your relationship is at seven. And I wonder if because we have a trade agreement that that'll keep going up. We found another spice field. Cool. So that's kind of like a question I have. Should I be infiltrating him to improve my relationship with him? I don't know. It might be something worth trying. I will soon have a lot more agents, which will be kind of exciting. And I think this is where I focus on building like intelligence agencies and stuff like that. I've got to wait for a lot of authority to 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 take Har a sec. And honestly, there's probably cheaper places. Sandworm detected, automatically escaping. Uh, I should also definitely be spending my manpower to increase my spice production. That seems important. Another leader would want a word with you. Speak to expand. Never ask us how they ever defend such a large and unattended territory. I don't think my territory is unattended. However, the fact that he's threatening me now is going to make me expand my military. So I'm going to go ahead and get another trooper and another ranger. And that way I have like two little armies kind of popping around the place. Um, where is my main army? It's over here. So I should probably get it in range of Arakeen. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, uh, I got to send a spice miner back out. I'm going to go ahead and deploy these guys down to the frontier border here. So Zariah, this way they're in position to protect Hallelujah and Turorech. Eventually, um, I will want an airport in Turo. Enemy operation. They've launched, they're poisoning my reserves. Interesting. Now, why would they do that? And where? We do have a big old sandstorm. Where is it blowing? Okay, it's blowing into Turo. Almost have the money to build another building in Arakeen. Aha, a siege has become friendly. So this would 
if I were to do this, it would lower my building upkeep in this region by 100%. That's a significant amount of resources, but I don't think it's necessary. But I think being friendly with a siege is useful enough to take an agent away from something, like counterintelligence, and put them in a siege. So I'm going to go ahead and deassign them, and then put you in charge of this. Um, so now I'm allied with this siege, and all of my buildings here have no upkeep. So that's like perfect. So to our wreck, we're going to go ahead, and the very first thing we always play is an airfield to uh, to be able to magnify our distance. Actually, let me cancel this airfield, because if I place it in a very specific place, I want it to be in range of Har Isek and Ha Aluya, but more importantly, Har Isek. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me think about the range of this so far. So when I'm zoomed in, like this much, it occupies most of the center of the screen. So this position here should cover both of these. That's perfect. My problem is now I don't have enough water. I would like to find like a region of five or six water would be ideal. I'll build a four if I have to, but ideally a five. Sandworm detected. Okay. Keep deploying our uh, harvesters. Let's come back over to Arakeen. Now that we have the embassy. Yes, I think I want the intelligence agency. I kind of want all of these blue buildings. But I, I definitely want the intelligence agency. More intel and re agent recruitment speed. And I'm able to store more operations. That's like quite powerful. I don't know. It just seems it seems good to me. Landsrad council vote. So we're ready for another vote. Ooh. Plaz Crete upkeep. Who's kind of fighting against me? It looks like it's the Fremen still. I'm going to dump my votes on the Fremen. Uh, I don't care about troop recruitment cost or the Landsrad standings. So I'll just give like a little bit of a, a token vote towards the Fremen. Looks like I'm the only person eligible to be the Speaker of the Council right now. In terms of the Judge of the Council, I'm not quite eligible yet. So it would be good to research a military tech so that I could get, um, yeah, plus eight command points. This would allow me to get more military. I think that's where I'd like to go with this. I need more military points too. So here's what we'll do. I need to deploy a harvester in Turo uh, Rec. Village is under siege. Oh, Jesus. Uh... Deploy my military. I did not see that coming. Can I use my Arrakis diplomacy to make this go away? No, it didn't work. Let's reduce their power. My, here's the rest of my troops. So I'll have to do a, like a little bit of micro here. Uh, you're taking damage a little bit too fast. Let's pull you out of the fight. That's upsetting. They crippled this area right here. But we got it under control. Let's get everyone stacked up for healing. And the village is now back under our control. The council vote. We did manage to target the Fremen and target the Fremen. Oh, wait, sorry. This vote hasn't gone through yet. Sorry. Game lied to me a little bit. We found a siege over here. That's problematic because I don't have the water to trade them right now. Um, I would like to, though, and the more siege allies I have, the better. They're worth 400 hegemony each. So definitely worth doing. Definitely worth getting control of them, if you can. I have a trade request. You want my influence and my plazcrete for intel and gold? No, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and drop a refinery and then expand this town. We're going to want like turrets and stuff. And this, I think if this airfield worked out exactly as I had hoped, we will be able to transport very effectively around our, our empire. Oh, no. Well, the good news is I went for a super plasteel production. Um, so this plasticrete upgrade is not the worst thing ever. We have a look at this. Wow, people voted for me heavily. Interesting. I was expecting less voting than this. I'm surprised. Very, very surprised by this. I'm also really surprised by this, um, that I would be targeted. I guess because I'm winning, the AI is targeting me because I'm quote unquote like, like ahead of them. Um, so I can see why they're making the choice to try to take me out, so to speak. Sandstorm nearby, not ideal. Uh, but yeah, in Hain, I'm going to want to deploy more militia than I had before, but I need to take care of my... Um, my manpower problem, so that'll be kind of a, an interesting move here. I do have an unassigned agent. I'm going to assign them to the Fremen. I want to know more about what they're up to. Uh, I'm going to get a supply drop, gear sabotage, and that's what I'll have for now. Ghost market, they're stealing my resources, those jerks. Let's deploy this harvester. And now we want a missile battery in this town. And we want it ideally to overlap as much as possible with Har Esek, because this battery overlaps with Tuo Re, and then we want Har Esek's battery to over, so that Tuo Re and Har Esek are going to be like uber protected uh, defensively. Oh, hello. Where are these guys heading? 
As long as they're not heading towards me, I'm okay with this. Um, where is the most central place in my empire? I think this is the most central, but I think the most vulnerable is here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and shuttle my troops over to Zarya so that I'm kind of in a reasonable place to respond to all aggression. Now, I want to play another one of these buildings, but I think this extra manpower here will help. I could get the Chome branch. It's a lot of money from the Chome branch, actually. Or I could get the Harvester Works. This would justify a lot of money. I'll get the Harvester Works. We'll start developing this uh, two, two drop thing. I'll probably get the Chome branch as well. Construction complete. Building in one of my villages is done. Nice. We have our turrets. Oh, something dropped from the sky there. Trade request. I don't want to sell my influence. My influence is very, very precious to me. Like super precious. Um, I have a lot of it though, so maybe I should spend some. I do feel like I'm the most expanded person on the map right now. Which is good. You want me to build two new statecraft buildings or get elected to positive resolutions. Hmm, okay. How is my relationship with everyone? It looks like having that treaty did in fact improve our relations. So I think keeping up with the, the knowledge here Ooh, I'm a little bit worried about my tax rate. Let me uh, let me go ahead and stack up some more of this. It's interesting that they consider their own influence important, but not my influence. I'm going to send them on 100 influence uh, and a trade deal in the hopes of like continuing to improve my relationship Let's with the smugglers. I want to get their relationship up to 80. I think that's my goal eventually. But like, I don't really know how good that, how like important that is or how hard that is. Okay, the lands is coming. Infrastructure control, that's good. And authority production. I want both of those. So we'll start saving influence now. My money is dying. Ah, it's because I'm not selling. Uh, I'm not selling spice anymore. That makes uh, quite a bit of sense. Okay. Now it looks like Harkonnen is looking to take control here. I'm curious. They're pillaging. Okay, pillaging is fine. I don't want them to control the center though. Contr them controlling the center would worry me. Let's get a recruitment office. I need my manpower up. I'm just gonna build up our economy here a little bit. I have enough stockpiled. I can start selling again. All right. Good. 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 And um, I've got a huge amount of plaskrete stored up so we can probably go a little bit wild on spending Let's see i could get crafts workshop this pushes me in the direction of victory or i could continue to develop my empire with influence and knowledge it has been a while since i've upgraded my knowledge base i don't think i care too much about developing my intel but listening posts and research hubs and crafts workshops these all seem okay. I could also just use like lots more manpower it's not a terrible thing to do yeah let's get manpower let's do it I'm a little bit light on manpower and I still have spice harvesters I need to fill up and I'm going to be getting more spice harvesters. There's at least one down here that I could grab and then there's one right on my border up here I could grab. So I'm going to need like a ton of manpower. We paid the imperial tax. Good day. And we're going to easily hit the next one. Easily hit the next one? No, okay. Easily hit the next one at this rate of investment. Any sandwormers? Auto recall activated. Feeling good. I think I need to get more plazcrete. So anywhere I can build it, I guess I should. Because just having tons... Because I can eventually delete them, right? They only cost Plazcrete to make. The more Plazcrete I have, the more I can build up my, my entire empire to be a little bit taller, right? That's kind of what I'm thinking of here. There's an operation, a ghost market going on here. That sucks. I need water too. I think my best zones are fours. Yeah, unfortunately they are. So I'll get a water collector wind trap here. Honestly, this place gets attacked regularly. So a missile battery wouldn't be out of shape here but i'll get a water collector i could use that little bit more water i'm getting close to the point where i'll be able to expand and peacefully annex the middle once i have that my hold on arrakis is like very very concrete not quite absolute but concrete you know plazcrete one might say uh we do have a new tech available i think i do want ground command um let me have a think here minor houses deliver dump box near your base every 20 days chome infiltration all relationship gains, resources received, agents on Arrakis, infiltration reduces more authority. 10% of the votes you pass are refunded as influence. That actually seems pretty good. Influence production per active treaty. These are all seemingly very, very strong. I think I need to get ground command. My manpower is problematic. So reducing my manpower consumption and increasing my military capacity will potentially open up some Landsrad options for me, like Judge of the Council. So Landsrad support, that basically gives you the Sardaukar, sort of Landsrad guards. Um, I don't know if they're Sardaukar, but in my mind they are. They're like the same thing. House of Trades, Yes, I want this. I really want Imperial Propaganda because this is so hard to get. I have almost maxed out influence, so I can definitely vote hard here. So how about we go like, we go super hard. 
on both. And then we give these to, who's the weakest player? We'll give them to the smugglers. We'll drop the rest of our votes in here. Bada bing, bada boom, and we'll see how this ends. Village under siege. Oh, reduce their power. And can we teleport to landing here? So we've got troops on the way. It'll take a while though. And they are getting hit by my turrets, which is good. I could attack this siege, but I don't know if I want to. I would rather do diplomacy with them. So let's get these guys positioned inside the lift zone. Perfect. Have an unassigned agent. I do have the water here, but I want to get Harasek first. So I need to wait for the influence to grab Harasek, and then this will give me like infinite water down here. There's also a strength four wind here, so it is worth it now to build a wind trap. Oh man, I really lost the construction cost. Wow, they voted hard on that one. Well, I won the authority one at least. And I managed to make the smugglers win, which is good. Because I have no qualms with the smugglers. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm trying to build a relationship with them. And it's going okay. Like, we're... Generating power here. It seems to take a very long... Um, very long time. To, uh, to get people to even slightly warm to you. I think my next construction with my Plazcrete is the Chome Branch. It's an expensive building, but it does a lot of really cool things. First of all, it reduces uh, the Solari upkeep production to all ally villages in neighboring regions. So I'm not sure what the Solarii upkeep production is, but I'll know when I get to hover over it. But it means I make way more money from my spice and I make a good deal more money from my Chome infiltration agents. Although I don't think I have many agents on Chome, but that is a thing that we could do. Make sure we're deploying our harvesters. Enemy hegemony stage reached. Okay, so people are leveling up and stuff and the sandstorm's flowing about. Um, let's get these guys out of here. It's our best move. I have an unassigned agent. So I'm not sure what infiltrating an enemy does aside from generate a decent amount of intel. I think I would like to infiltrate Chome, just so I have more options on this menu here. I need, I really need to be doing political audit, like, on cooldown to get my Landsrad standing up. Okay, I have the influence to peacefully annex Harasek, and I, I don't want to militarily do it, because it's, like, awkward, so I'll do it peacefully. I am starting to now have a really good manpower surplus, so I can start dropping um, crew into places. I thought I had built the recruitment center, but I haven't yet. I'm still waiting on ground command. But I do want that recruitment center. Landsrad's on the way. Okay. Uh, all these seem okay to me. I don't care too much. I might save my influence for other things. So over the course of the game, like, new things will appear. Like, new scavenged ornithopters and stuff. And ornithopters can get extra uses from technology, actually. One of the things that they can learn to do is assist your spice harvesters in their harvesting of spice. Which is kind of handy. Also, I need to find more water merchants. Water seller caravan. Yeah, let's buy that influence. The authority, rather. So having tons of authority will mean we can continue to expand. Um, I want this spice harvesting place over here for sure. So we're peacefully annexing the polar sink. I think I would like to peacefully annex over here. So now that's well underway. My control over Arrakis feels not quite absolute, but very, 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 very strong. Let's get a heavy weapons team. And I think I want a mercenary. Yeah. Mercenaries seem quite good. Sand Tactics. They use less manpower and they're relatively powerful. And they're trained super fast. Okay, that's big. And they have a lot of supply. Ooh, these guys can go deep. I could even potentially, depending on how far away this is, this deep desert over here, I could uh, go explore some of these kind of game-winning ruins. That's quite interesting to me. Let's come into Haim and make sure that we train an extra two veteran militia here. Just so we have the military backup we need. Now we got ground command, which was key. And now I would like to unlock the extra buildings here. So I want the council chamber. So let's go ahead and unlock a tradies delegation. Oh man, look at that income with the Chome branch. That is huge. Uh, I super need... 0 0.5 manpower per controlled village. That seems so good. Oh man, that's so much manpower. I think this scales like so well for me. Command points, armor, health. This is like a fortification building. I think I want the manpower. Lots of manpower. Seems based. It's time to vote in the lands, Rad. Uh, I think I don't want this to pass, so I'll throw like a few token votes in it. I don't care about recruitment cost. Harkonnen can have that one. Manpower upkeep, I would rather it failed. But otherwise, I'm saving my influence. 
Gotta keep looking for things to explore with my ornithopters. Sandworm time. We escaped. My economy is popping off, which makes me feel really good. Like, I'm at a position now where I can go up to, like, easily, comfortably add, like, level 4 building slots, level 5 even, in some of these places. I think this area is important enough to me to get a military base. The problem is that it's also a spice harvesting spot, but I think it's more important to me as a military base. So I'm going to pop down the military base so all of my units in neighboring regions will get a 20% combat boost. This just lets me kind of play a little bit more fast and loose with things in this area. Let's start building some militia in our forward most vulnerable areas. Unassigned agent. Probably be a good idea to have at least... I don't see a reason to go to level 3 with some of these. I guess atomics. Ooh, atomics? There's a nuclear program? Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm curious. Let's make friends with the spacing guild. It seems... <laughs> <laughs> Seems kind of valuable. Things are happening quite quickly for me now. So there's actually like a reasonable amount of clicking. Even though this is a very, very evenly paced game, like not a lot happens very quickly for a long time. But now it's happening all quite a bit. I don't think I'm going to need wind traps much longer. But I think it is okay to drop one extra wind trap just so I have that little bit of water. So I can continue to expand down here, for example. Um, once I have Harasek and the tech down here, water seller contracts. Uh, once I have this tech, we'll be good to go. I do need to increase my technology research. I've noticed it's starting to slow down. And I have to imagine, oh wow. This was declined, which was nice. This was supported, which was bad. And the Fremen won the other things. So that's fine by me. Um, not too worried about that. What was I gonna say? The leader would wanna cut you. We operated to the free. What do you oh. There we go, we got the new village. This village needs instantaneously a missile battery as a way to cooperatively battle and protect this area. It's protected by an airport too, so that's good. And we've reached 10,000 hedge money, which is quite a way along towards being a winner. Combat ongoing. Excuse me. Ah, raid detected. Now it looks like they're raiding here again, but my turrets, my turrets and my military should be good enough. Um, I need to start trading these guys to improve my relation with them. I don't want to be enemies with them anymore. And I'll eventually be able to... Uh, to plug my, my people in. All right, good, good. Easy kills, easy kills. Yeah, veteran militia, by the way, super good. Super, super good. On par with, like, troopers, if not better. Village under siege, combat ongoing, construction complete, construction complete. Good, good, good. Sandworm detected. Nothing too scary going on. We have found three sieges now. Or sieges. I'm not actually sure how to pronounce them. A trade request. Let's get to business. Hmm. Not sure if I want this. Nah, they're asking for way too much. Decline. I feel like I can use my own resources more effectively myself. Yeah, let's get plus one knowledge. Twelve just doesn't feel like enough now. I need, like, at least another one. Somewhere. Fairly cheap. Can I get one as a fourth slot? Nah, I'm up to my fifth slots now, which is starting to get expensive. I'll need to expand. Well, here's a fourth slot. Um. Yeah. I can get another research hub here. Now, I don't know how, how fast this is used up, but I'm okay with it. Uh, deploy my harvesters, deploy my harvesters, deploy another crew. I need to think about... Oh, right! I took over over here. Uh, duh. Um, let's train a veteran militia. Drop down a refinery, because we want to start harvesting that spice. And we're now 40% of the way, or more, like more like 45% of the way towards winning. Which feels pretty damn good. Slowly just climbing up the ranking here. And, that, and that's something about this game, is that it feels like everything you do kind of pushes you towards victory. And it's rare for a game to achieve that. Oftentimes a lot of games kind of feels like the game is fighting you on your way to victory. Okay, Water Cellars Union. I can become the leader of the Water Cellars, water cellars Union, which means all of the water I have in excess gets converted into Solari. Uh, which is quite powerful, especially because now I own the poles, right? The polar sink. That's actually like a pretty big deal that I own this. So you could build a maximum of five buildings in an area. Okay, that's good to know. I thought six was the maximum because it was kind of implied by the shape of this. But five, if five is the maximum, I would like shift these buildings over by like half a width so that you know that it's only five at a max. The way it was kind of like you built in the UI kind of looks like that's not what it's implying. So uh, lots of plascrete because I'm trying to build up my, my places. How long until I can do another annexation? The red chasm... Good concrete spot here, actually. Let's go ahead and start annexing them. Hostile units near territory. Now, this is concerning. However, it does look like they're heading towards blue and not me. Ooh, that's a lot. Hold on. Let's deploy to 2 wreck 
and uh, maybe get some more mercs. So mercs are like on par with troopers, I would say, but they also come with some good little uh, debuffs and they recruit really, really fast. I'm a little bit concerned about this, so I'm going to deploy some troops to the front. Yeah, deploying into a sandstorm is probably not my greatest strategy ever. But thankfully, I think if they stand still inside the town's influence, they shouldn't get murdered. Shouldn't. <laughs> the operative word there. Should not. Let's trade some water for some spice. So this will be my thir third siege that I'm making friends with. Um, which is good, because that's worth hegemony, right? Spice silos. Increase our spice flows. Maximize the spice production. Am I missing a spice silo here? I am. I'll need to build one. Although Arakeen is crying out for more buildings, to be honest. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to make sure that I'm doing everything that I want and making sure I'm maximizing all of those things. Ooh, yeah. I definitely need to tear down these ruins. Can I get a mercenary deployed over here and get them to do this? Because that's worth, that's worth hegemony, which is victory points, right? The win, the things that make you win are very, very important. Believe it or not. You may not like it, but it is true. So we got the Atreides delegation. I think I want local hubs. 0 0.2 knowledge per controlled village is quite good. Um, that'll help just my future teching uh, continue to go smoothly. It's time to vote. And I think I very badly want to be the Water Sellers Union guy. So I'll put 350 votes in there, 50 in here, and then I'll hold the rest. But because I'm going to be the water guy, um, this seems really, really important for me to actually control that. So we got Tal Alula. More plants create, more fuel cells, more wind traps. This is a wind strength five area. Uh, you know what I need? I need an airfield over here. Yeah, an airfield would allow me to project power. It'll allow me to reinforce should bad things happen. So airfield it is. It's a little bit far away. It's like a big trek over here. So the airfield means troops can move and land. Uh, I've got another agent. Let's go ahead and go to max level with Chome. Poor agents are hard at work just constantly, day and night, trying to find out the, the dirt on enemies. I do like that all throughout the game, new like little random events are happening that you can investigate with your ornithopters. It give you, like it keeps them relevant throughout the whole game. And then like spice silos, increase our spice flows. Because you can have them like escort your military units to give them like an advantage and stuff. Perfect, we just picked up an extra 250 victory points. All right, we got point of interest. There's some spice. 60 spice from there. 270 money. 270 money. I think I might need to start doing other things with these. It's been like trying to consistently grab a lot of these uh, events. I probably need to start using more counter spies. My influence is great, although I'm about to spend a lot of it. I'll wait until my influence is spent. How's Atreides won? No one else voted for that? Really? Wow, nobody wanted military developments to increase in speed. Wow. I was expecting way more competition for the water seller. Apparently not. All right, let's start using some agents to investigate some of these events around the planet. I've got a hundred manpower in the bank. That tells me I got to like upgrade a harvester somewhere. We just paid our imperial tax. How are we looking for the next one? Oh yeah, we're well ahead of schedule. Let's go ahead and lower our commitments to spice stockpiling. Yeah, that's way more like it. Gonna make bank. We can probably start buying uh, chome shares. Every 10k uh, money we can turn into 500 victory points, which is like huge. It's a gr like uh, it might not sound like it, but it's a great conversion rate. All right, lovely. We got control of a new town. This one 100% wants a Plascreed factory because it's making serious minerals. Uh, it almost feels like you need a Plascreed factory in every town. Like unironically, if you want to build them up, that's what it feels like. Raid detected. Ah, uh, shoot. Right, where's my troops? Can we go ahead and shuttle them over to Tadalula? It'll take them a few minutes to get there, but they will get there. Um, at the very least, we do have defenders. Here they go, the troops have arrived to defend. Man, having airports is so useful. It takes up a building slot, but it lets you just... The power projection from having airports is insane. It's crazy. I definitely feel like I need more fuel cells because I've been using them. I feel like airfields should be way more expensive than fuel cells for how powerful they are. It feels a little strong. I got my local hub, so that's my tech increasing. I was looking for a building, I think. Hold on, Arakeen. I could build the council chamber, which would give me Landsrad standing and influence production. Or I get the administrative hall, which gives me authority and hedge money. Honestly, I want both of these. Like really, I want both. But I'm going to get the council chamber first. Like so. Uh, and then I'll get the administrative hall. Yeah, like here's spectral imaging, right? Allied military units near your ornithopters uh, lose less supply. And 
uh, your harvesters get a 20% gathering rate. So ornithopters can get quite powerful. But I think I need this water seller's contract. Lowering my water upkeep is going to be huge for me here. Uh, especially, uh, the, the siege trades are like sucking up so much of my water. Still trying to improve my relationship with the smugglers by proposing deals that they like. Uh, it seems to be kind of working. All I have to do is propose a deal and then like a little bit of spice. Or whatever they're after. Like for example here, they're after intel. If I drop both, like boom. Let's get to uh, 51 relation level. So do I, do I just have to gift them a resource that I don't care that much about? And their relationship will go up? Okay, yeah, that's powerful. So let me think about that. Why was I trying to get their relationship to 80? There was like a reason. There was either a tech or a building or something. I don't know why. I think it might be something to do with my people. Oh, we found a siege over here as well. I want to get control of that. But I, I really enjoy this extremely chill playstyle because I'm. I feel like I'm getting to know the mechanics. I'm not engaging in too much war. I feel like if I was playing Harkonnen, I would be way more aggressive. I'd be raiding on my borders constantly. I would be basically raiding on cooldown. So you managed to capture an agent. That feels good. Uh, let's go ahead and do a political audit for thirty Landsrad raiding. Combat ongoing. Oh, looks like a rebellion. I didn't see that coming. Let's deploy all of our guys. Oh, that is where the airfield was, isn't it? Mm. That's the danger, I guess. This is the closest place. This is the closest place, place to deploy. So it'll take us a few minutes to get over here. I can debate them and run around for a while with this guy. It seems to cancel their, uh, their capture status. Get down here. Canceling their capture status is quite helpful. <laughs> I will say that. Very, very helpful. Oh, there's two rebellions. All right, let's get ourselves some mercenaries here. So rebellions are tough to deal with. Exploit a new spice field. That was the plan. I think these two mercs over here, they should be able to cancel this capture in time um, and buy me time to get over there to retake it. This one should be just canceled and retaken immediately. People are mad at me for uh, having a huge army <laughs> that uses a lot of water. I was like, what can I tell you? This is Arrakis, okay? You gotta... Oh, sandworm! Dodge! Dodge it. Okay, we escaped. We have our airport back. I need to pull them out of the capture zone so that it resets. Okay, that's working. My troops are teleporting, or well, they're on the shuttles on their way. Let's go. Okay, so there is, yeah, there is a downside, okay? Garrisons aren't perfect. They don't protect you from rebellions. Ooh, I kind of want the sandworm to hit me here. Not gonna lie. Because I think it'll nab all their troops too. How come they don't get hit by no sandworm? Get him out of here. How dare they? It's time for another Landsrad. Ooh, yeah. Being Speaker of the Council? Also something that I want to have control of? I have to assume that that's worth it. I'll dump all my votes in that one. So I have access to the Water Seller's contract now. Oh, was this what I wanted? Ah, the Atreides Merchant. Ah, uh, this will give me money for being high relations with people. Yes, this seems like a good tech. Just like a lot of base money. Although at this point I'm making like crazy money. Let's have units stationed at various ends of my empire. If a rebellion happened over here, it'd be devastating because it would take me so long to march through the desert to get to them. So I'm going to have some units stationed here to protect from rebellions. Uh, so now I come over to Harasek and I can build the unique building, the water extractor, which gathers ice, melts it and filters it to produce clean water. So this is like, this is the wa strategic water supply of the game, uh, is access to here, the uh, water extractor. It's an incredibly powerful building. And because I'm also in the Landsrad, because I'm the Water Sailors Union elected as that, that means I get to um, I get to get make money from that. So surplus water equals good for me. Let's come into Arakeen and drop an administrative hall. That's 30% more authority and 10% hedge money. That seems really, really great. And let's get control of Al Ara Alaram. And this way we can start trading water with the siege as well. The more control I have over these sieges means no raids from them from me. Which is the is what I want. I don't want to be dealing with these raids. Like they're really annoying. Let me give Esmer a little bit of spice to improve his relationship with me. Seventy-five now. Still not quite high enough. We will get there. We will get there. We'll get his relationship up. Okay, now I've got sixty water. We finished the water extractor. Harasek. It has a missile battery, a Plascrete factory, and I think I'm okay on manpower. I think I need to start doing hedge money. Yeah, I think it's time to start placing craft workshops everywhere that makes sense, which is everywhere that I can afford to place them. Like over here, boom, new slot. Then we place the craft workshop. And that way we turn our massive Plascrete production into actual like game winning points. 
We got a trade request. Um, the Fremen want a research agreement. They want a thousand eighty-two and nine. I mean, these seem like reasonable terms. I'll take the deal. It cost me a bit of authority, but hey, I'm generating a decent amount. Village under attack. Thankfully, I had my military here to protect. I need to fall back and let the militia. Oh, the militia are taking the most of the damage. That's good. Perfection. And we kill the last little dude. Now we are good to go. Paid our imperial tax and we are on schedule to paying our next one. We shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. We've got a huge amount of money in the bank. Let's talk to our intel guys and do a chome shares. Boom. So it cost me 10k, but pays off in terms of victory points. Let's get ourselves a Rackus Diplomacy. It's good to have one of those in the bank. Let's do a political audit so we get our Landsrad standing up. And our Landsrad standing is now increasing one point per day. So we are eventually going to max out that Landsrad standing, which is amazing. I sent him another 100 intel so that he's up to 80 relations. Point of interest, resolve. You know, there's actually quite a lot to keep up with. The game has like a really good ebb and flow. Like there's pretty intense moments and then things kind of like lean back and relax a little bit. And that's quite nice too. It has a very, um, has a very nice ebb and flow to the gameplay. Okay, so let's buy some Chome shares. Boom. Now we're up to nearly 1,500. We are up at just about 1,500 hegemony. And that's slowly but slow, slowly but surely increasing. Out of curiosity, I can't quite ally with this siege yet, but soon, TM. Big combat, okay. This is a hard city to get to. Combat on going here, combat on going here. Are you shooting? I hope my turrets are shooting. Can my turrets do this, I wonder? Recruit a merc. Get that merc recruited and get them teleporting in. Closest spot here. Now, the nice thing with the mercs is they have tons of uh, supply, so you can like deploy them into the deep desert and run them where you need them. Oh yeah, look at these turrets, man, taking out the rebellion. That's perfect. Uh, we just picked up Atreides merchants, so that's good. Field work, extra salary production per controlled special region. Ah. Energy markets, fuel cells, defense systems, manpower, command points. 1% of your unit's total power is produced as influence, and military units use less daily supply drain. 20% airfield ranged. Hmm. Don't think I care too much about military stuff. I mean, support drones would be good. It might not be bad to get the recycling vats. Ooh, 20% influence per special controlled region could be quite helpful, actually. No, I want output logistics, outpost logistics, so I can annex more territory. That's like the perfect one. But I'm happy that I have a trickle of hegemony now, and I'll want to like turn that trickle into a torrent. And the way to do that, I think, is to um, start building more crafts workshops. I don't know what a crafts workshop is. Is it like literally like they're just crafting really cool things for like people to buy? That's what it sounds like. All right, turrets are doing work. God, that was beautiful. To watch those turrets just like murder everything that I didn't want to deal with. Ah, Judge of the Council is up for voting. This allows you to train Landsrad guards. That's a unit that you can train with influence. So it essentially lets you turn your influence into a military. Uh, you know for a fact we're going all in on that one, baby. We want control of it. I don't care about water upkeep. I make a million water, all right? Do not care. I just want to control the polit... Poli uh, my goal is to control the politics of Arrakis and also be the most expansive uh, territory controller on Arrakis. And I, I feel like I've achieved that. That's like been the goal since day one. And I feel like I've kind of gotten in that direction. All right, nice one. Re reclaimed this rebellion. I'm it's interesting that militia won't defend. It's like interesting. You know, traitorous militia. Things to think about. I got a huge amount of manpower in the bank. Let's go ahead and max out our harvesters. Boom, boom, boom. And then boom, boom. So harvesters are completely maxed out. They should be cranking the uh, the spice. But I definitely feel like I'm in the late game now. Like we're we're on the way to um, to winning because. Every, I don't know, like 10, 12, 13 days, I can do a uh, Solari trade for um, Chome contracts, which will let me get edge money. I'm slowly building up my Landsrad standing to the point where I will get lots of hedge money. In fact, I think I'm at the maximum level now. I'm getting 1,400 from that. And uh, I'm slowly getting to the point now where all of these sieges are allied. So that's even more points, right? So we're, I feel like we're, we're in the super late game. Right, I had to take a short break there. Uh, it, it takes about three or four hours to uh, get get through a playthrough here. Now, there was a raid heading out somewhere. Uh, it looks like the siege is somewhere in this desert uh, for this area. 
But the lands of Advos is going through, and I would really like to be the judge of the council, because it'll allow me to turn my influence into military units as well. Plus, also, just owning all of the council positions seems kind of fun. I don't really care about high water upkeep. That shouldn't bother me. And I don't think we're going to be having any rebellions. I did get a chance to get control of another village. And while the processing plant is really useful, I'm not sure I really need another processing plant. Like, my my Plascrete income is, is kind of nutty right now. Hmm. I definitely want to be trading with the Siege Aldad. This is a really bad trade, 10 water for 15 Plascrete. However, the um, relation level increase, okay, and the eventual hedge money that I get from trading with these guys is super worth it. The processing plant, I, it, 30 Solari at this point in the game just does not feel like enough. I, might, I may even go back and delete my other ones in exchange for different buildings. I still do think a Plascrete factory is nearly necessary in every single town just because like I, I use so much Plascrete. So I'll open up with a Plascrete factory here. All right, let's have a look at the resolutions here. Okay, so water upkeep went up and this got declined, but I did win to the, the right to be the judge of the council. And now I can train lands red guards. So you can see the interesting thing about these guys is they actually don't take any um, manpower upkeep, right? You see here, uh, upkeep, six money and three manpower. The mercenaries take 20 money upkeep. Whereas the Landsred Guard, they cost uh, three water and um, three manpower. But their upkeep is only influence. So like this means I have arguably one of the strongest units in the game, right? On par with a warden. Um, and the only thing that it costs me is blue. So, you know, it, it's, it's quite a powerful unit. And I'm in a really, really strong position as a result. And I, and I definitely will be trading at least one Landsred Guard so that I can position him around my empire to uh, protect it. Let's get started on buying some Chome shares. This is going to be another 500 uh, hedge money here, getting us closer to that really, really, uh, really important 2,500 or 2,000 uh, to 25,000 hedge money, which will, of course, win us the game. I'm also, I'm popping down craft workshops everywhere that I can because these are just like a very, very passive way to trickle in just, just a scooch of hedge money. And like basically anywhere that I have uh, available building slots left, that's what I'm going to be doing is craft workshops. I need that hedge money production. It just needs to happen. We did manage to trigger the Chom share, so that's another 500 points. We are very, very close to our win condition now. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm just curious what I want to do with this last district. I mean, I guess a couple of buildings maybe... I could get like the barracks plus the command post to have a much bigger military. And not that I need to. I don't think I need to do that. All right, we have a rebellion over here. Let's grab our troops. I wish I understood how rebellions started. I'll pay that money. I wish I understood how rebellions would begin. Um, but I have my lands guard in the area. And I can pull in probably a little bit more troops. Go ahead and get the airlift going. I'm going to go ahead and recruit like a few more Landsrad guards. Just so that I can have like a relatively strong military just kind of hanging out on the map doing what they need to do. Now the one thing about Landsrad guards is I don't think they, uh, I don't think they level up. That's like the only downside is. She actually wants to give me spice and plascrete. I'll take that deal. It's a rare, it's rare that I see a deal like that that I actually want to take. But I'll take that one. An enemy has reached uh, 10,000 hegemony. Now, what I could start doing is raiding people, but I think I think diplomacy is the way of the Atreides. Let's, get to business. Let's see if we can get a trade agreement with you. Uh, you really value Plascrete, so I'll give you, like, a little bit of each. There you go. I'll get that trade agreement going. That'll get me a nice boost to my income. Quite a bit, actually. All right, I'm making sure that I'm deploying my troops around my empire so that I can be well protected from a variety of different things. Uh, let's get this group here. See, I have a group deployed over here to the northwest. I have a group deployed to the southwest. Uh, let's have this group deployed, I guess, down here. That should handle things. I should probably have a small group deployed in Zarya. Uh, I'm kind of at my maximum troop cap without doing research. So we'll have to kind of think about that. Okay, the Dune Governorship is up for grabs now. Uh, I definitely want to maximize my influence income and hold on to as much influence. I wonder if I could buy influence from others. This guy really values that influence. Let's bring it down a little. Like, what if I could buy 80 of your influence, right? And then I gave you like 400 uh, intel. So I'll give him 360 for 80 influence. So I'm, I'm taking that influence for myself, right? And the idea here is that I'll just have the entire map's influence. Now, it's going to be expensive to do this, but I do think that this will 
allow me to dominate and get the Dunes governorship. They should both accept, I think. Yeah, both accepted. So now I'm up to over 300 influence. I never thought about... Tra I need to think a little bit more about trading. I think trading is quite viable. It's something I should be considering more often. The potential for trade is, is quite high. Ah, the siege is friendly. So I can come in here to my agents and I'll take Aaron off of counterintelligence. And I'll place him in here so that we can... Um, Make sure we, we make friends with the siege. And now what is the benefit that they give me? Ah, they make my troopers cheaper and cost less. That's great. I wonder, so each siege is like a small little global bonus, right? Ah, Fremen agents, okay. And then there's this last one. Oh, 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 oh. What's this? We're under attack. Uh, I don't think I can get over there fast enough, but I can run these guys over. Do I have a frem- I have a Rackus Diplomacy, I'm gonna play it here, and then that'll disband the raid. And then I'm gonna come in here, um, and once you're out of combat, I'm gonna go ahead and get myself a couple of veteran militia to protect this. So it'll take a while before we get friends with these guys, but they will give my militia quite- and that is really, really powerful actually. 20% health and some- oh, God damn it. Um, let's send the Lance Rad in there, and we will pull- Ooh, my command points are kind of dipping, hold on. Um, what could I drag off over there? Let me see. I'll bring my range units. Drop them right on the border. And I'll bring these guys here right on the border too. So I'm not sure where these... I'm not sure where these rebellions are coming from. But they seem to be happening pretty regularly now. I think it might just be like a function of like... Oh, it's part of like the attrition mechanic. You have to play defensively and protect your land and stuff like that. Yeah, my land's bad is in there. Making work happen. We're protecting the city. But there's an awful lot to keep track of at this point. The enemy operations. Ghost market. Man, they're really trying to steal all of my resources. Now, technology-wise, we could go for some of these quite expensive. It does seem like uh, deeper into the game, the, the more things you research, the more expensive research gets. So specializing in research is kind of a, a, a tough, a tough thing to do. Support drones wouldn't be terrible here. Field work would be really, really good. I reckon. I reckon if I did field work, energy markets does not seem very good. I'm gonna be honest with you, because I did not make that many, that many fuel cells. Yeah, a lot of these things seem quite difficult and expensive to to make work. Command post building, one more agent to spacing guild, call to arms, high command, defense systems. It seems like my militia aren't really holding off rebellions. I think I need something that gives me. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get the command post building. Because that will allow me to increase my army size. My army size is relatively small right now. Uh, let's pull back this Lance Rad guy. He needs to get out of there and heal. Um, so it's time to vote in the Lance Rad. And I think Dune Governorship is 100% the thing that I vote for. And I would like for the Fremen to be targeted by the Plascrete upkeep. My Plascrete is quite low at the moment, which is not ideal. But otherwise, I'm all in on taking the governorship of Dune. That's like, that's part of, that's one of the win conditions I can try to trigger. Um, which will be a big deal if I could make it work. Oh, I see. Vladimir Harkonnen is maybe threatening me right now. So that's, uh, I mean, it's not surprising. <laughs> He's a Harkonnen. So like, what do you expect? But it is annoying. Ah, okay. My, my, my reserves have been poisoned, so he can't regen. That's unfortunate. It should be okay. We can get our troops moved back around to the Empire. I do maybe have the authority to consider annexing another spot here. And I think Marga is a, is a good grab. It has been devastated, but I'm going to go ahead and peacefully annex Marga. It puts me in position to annex the Great Volcano next, and that's worth some hedge money. Let's go ahead and buy some more Chome shares. And I'll also do a political audit here. I want to try and boost, boost. Oh, wait, cancel the political audit, actually. You won't be refunded. Oh, well, that was a mistake. I, I, had ac I accidentally spent all of my influence. I, I, I think it's annoying that like the influence is still available until the lands rat actually triggers. I kind of, I wish it would take it out of the pool because I keep thinking that I had spare, and then, um, and then I spend it. It's like automatically, like oh you have a currency, use it, is like uh, the automatic refrain. So it looks like I was triggered by everything. Um, I was targeted by everything, so that's not good. Um, the plascrete shouldn't be too big of a problem. Because I'm basically producing it everywhere. So if I if I get like a little bit more Plascrete, boom, that should cover my needs. And then if I build one more Plascrete factory, I should be pretty comfortable. Sandwormies coming in. So we got our plant lands rad rating and we got our chome shares. Perfect. Oh man, we're so close to winning. Making serious bank here. 
they are just firing off those ghost markets at me. It's a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> just constantly being targeted with these negative events. Finally, we got another siege to be friendly. Let's take this guy off of counter intel. And we'll set him to make friends with this siege. This will give me uh, plus three intel and 30% agent recruitment speed. But more importantly, um, it's worth 400 uh, extra points from being allies with the siege. I'm curious, out of curiosity, yeah, I still have a, a room for three more agents. So I'm, I'm not up against some sort of wall here. Now, I'm curious, what building actually gives you command power? I don't see, like, uh, they must have a... Uh, Oh, command point deficit. Oh, I see. So I need to delete a unit. I will go ahead and let's have a look here. So these cost three. These cost five, four, three, three. So in order to get back down, I think I have to kill. I think I'll kill some basic units. Like these troopers are really sort of out of fashion now. I think they're super old. So if I just ban both of those, we'll be back down below our command point limit. It, it said like, oh, you need to um, you need to build buildings in your towns to increase your command point limit. But that must have been like from an older build, that, that tooltip. And it just hasn't been changed. Because I don't, I don't see a building that increases your command point limit. I swear I did see one at one point. But I don't know if I'm crazy now. Um, but I, I swear I did. My Plaz Creed is fine. Water trade is okay. It would give me access to the recycling vats. So like, the, the thing I need to think about is, like, what are the buildings I'm building in here? I could build the recycling bats, right? Plus five water per main, per building in your main base. 50 hedge money for each water-producing village. I do have a decent number of water-producing villages, so that's a significant amount of hedge money. So maybe recycling vats would be the play. Um, Actually, yeah, maybe, maybe recycling vats is the play. That's a lot of hedge money. Yeah, let's do it. It'll take me 30 days to research it, but it'll potentially get me closer to my victory condition. So I'm only losing a very, very small amount of plascrete. What's this? One of your military units will leave your s service if you don't lose 50 manpower. Okay, I'll lose the manpower. I'm at maxed out manpower. Uh, looks like there's a raid going on here. I think a part of the game for anyone but the Atreides is to constantly be raiding like the neutral villages and be taking out the sieges. But I definitely feel like the Atreides, they are very much so a diplomatic, peaceful, expansion-y kind, of, uh, kind of guys. Let's get to business. So they want my influence and my money in exchange for this stuff. I mean, I need the Plascrete, so I'll take this trade. Even if it's not like a 100% perfect optimal super trade for me. Um, I really want command post, right? I want this, uh, I want the power to all of my military units and I want the command point so I can have a larger military because my empire is huge, but my military score or my, my military is not big enough to hold it. Now, what does getting to level three with the spacing guild actually give me? Yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything too important. Let's go ahead and infiltrate the Fremen, because maybe we can do some infiltration cells. Maybe we can experiment with some of these late game intel missions. Treaties have ended. That's okay. Uh, I think I'm okay for doing treaties right now. I'd like to build up some authority. Kind of just waiting for the next land threat. Um, time to victory. 24 minutes until I win. That's actually quite good. I wish I understood what triggered rebellions. Because it feels like very, very random and like I don't understand it at all. But otherwise, like, I mean, you know, it, it seems like Fairly straightforward and normal. Combat ongoing, combat ongoing. We got this new village here. So I think the very first thing is, is this... Uh, it's kind of in range of an airfield. We could get here pretty reasonably quick. I think the first thing to build here is a turret. Protect, well, actually, hang on. What we really need here is a Plascrete factory, for sure. For sure, you need the Plascrete factory. Um, in terms of missions, we have enough money in the bank to go ahead and do another Chome shares. It definitely feels like this is like the late game, like, oh, you've built like a really overpowering economy. Uh, and then that's how you put the, th that's how you start turning the thumb screws, right? You're going to win the game. So here it comes. Now, the interesting thing is from my, oh, another siege that I can trade with. I will trade with them, give them water in exchange for their authority. We paid our imperial tax. That's good news. So we're getting more and more hedge money from that. I need to like lower my spice selling in order to hit quota next time. That's fine. And now it's time to vote in the Landsrad again. I think I would like to have cheaper buildings. I think I want influence production to be declined. So that would be good. 50% um, unit production. I don't care about this one, but I do kind of care about this one. So maybe I'll do like one, two, this much? 350 votes? That should cover it. So my Landsrad st st uh, stance is is maxed. Like, I literally can't go uh, higher on Landsrad rating. So it's kind of cool. I'm, I'm reaching sort of the late game, right? Where, where everything is, like, maxed out and we've we've made, like, serious progress. And it all, like, felt like it flowed organically, you know? 
Um, I quite enjoyed this. Oh, what's this? This is a reward based thing. Hold on. Let's get a uh, Let's get my Lance Radgard to go out here and Investigate these ruins that'll get me some hedge money. It'll, it's only gonna be a little chunk, but it'll be nice a nice boost my craft work workshops have actually been a very insignificant amount of my a very very insignificant amount of my resources here like surprisingly insignificant um, I suppose you could specialize in going crafts workshops like really early to try and push that hedge money um, I went for them late to try and like finish things off I guess that was kind of like maybe a backwards way to do it although you know they do cost a lot of maintenance right like if we look at these um where is it also I have not been doing my maintenance centers I think that's a huge mistake like if I come to Dalat this has it but I think over here, there's no maintenance center at all. And that's like a big mistake. Yeah, there's no maintenance center here at all. So, and, there, and there should be, there should be. Got a raid detected. Oops, so let's make sure we get uh, Arrakis Diplomacy. And we've got our troops in position. So at the very least, we shouldn't have to worry too hard. All right, here comes the battle. Our guys are coming out. I do feel like having an Arrakis Diplomacy in your, uh, in your bank is like super helpful. Goddamn rebellions. I wonder what's triggering these rebellions. I do have a fuels deficit, fuel cell deficit. That's a little unfortunate. Let's go ahead and deploy what we can find over here. Some sort of negative event going on, the poison reserves. Man, they're like poisoning my capital over and over again. Let's resolve this event. That'll get me my things, my points. I'm up to I, 2,000 now. I only need 2,000 to win. Yeah, my fuel cells are painful. Ooh, wow, lack of fuel cells cripples your harvester rate. And, ooh, wow, yeah, it really hurts a lot of different areas. A lot of different areas get wrecked by a fuel cells deficit. So I definitely feel like I should be looking to get a more permanent solution to a fuel cells deficit. Let's go ahead and pop this down. Uh, I'll get some fuel cell factories right there. So much is happening. Let's get this lance rat over to fight these guys. Can't deploy my harvesters on, during a rebellion. So it looks like I'm, I'm in a late game crisis right now, right? Bad things are starting to happen, but maybe we can stabilize it. And it looks like we might be able to. Aegdalus is under control. We can deploy our inactive harvesters back out to their fields. Uh, and speaking of Marga, actually, I should totally get a refinery here. Oh, right, I'm low on fuel cells. Of course, that was the issue. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh, sandworm, run. Didn't even get proper warning on that sandworm. Uh, let's go ahead and take those chome shares. So we're ve we're actually like insanely close to a victory here. Like it's like we're on the cusp of winning. Um, and I have a lot more room for military, which is quite good. I think the AI should theoretically start getting a little bit antsy about the fact that I'm close to winning. Let's airdrop a group over to Dal Awa, and then we'll airdrop airdrop this group. I have some up in the north. I'll airdrop them over here. So. Trade request, uh, decline. I'm going to decline trades right now because I just want to maximize my gold or my my, my cash flow, which I can then uh, do chome shares with. There's another chome share. Perfect. Perfect. I, I'm definitely like a big fan of um, of uh, of this kind of like passive diplomatic style defensive. You know, you focus a lot on getting your, um, what you call them, getting your militia up, having a lot of really well protected towns playing quite defensively, not worrying too much about like raiding and aggression because I could be attacking Tab Tower, right? I could be I could be raiding in there. Chome shares, boom. We are literally days away from winning. Okay, I think they're going to raid Arlon, Arnlon or are they coming for me? Yeah, they're going for Arnlon. What I was going to say is um, it feels a little bit like, uh, what was I going to say? It feels a little bit like that the game, oh God, there was a word I was going to use and now it's kind of come out of my head. Oh, God, I was gonna criticize. I was gonna criticize the game, and now I've, I've, it came out of my head, and I can't remember. Very, 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 very annoying. Anyway, but I, I, I like it. I really like it. It's really cool. The sound design is incredible. Ugh, a rebellion, a rebellion. Of course. Let's deploy these to here, and um, maybe I can make a little bit more landsrad. Should get a support drone too. So, Speaker of the Council is up for vote again. All active charters are revoked. I don't know what active charters are. All active charters. What are charters? I'm worried that this, oh, the Dune governorship. I'm worried that this will cause me to lose. So I'm going to go ahead and decline this so I can stay governor and potentially win off of that. I mean, I'm winning off hegemony too. So we shall see. I see. So investing in this, if the loss, I, 
Aha, so if I was the speaker of the council, I could re-roll away from this. And I am the, and I just forgot to do it. Aha, I see. So being the speaker of the council actually gives you a huge amount of power over who gets to control the doing governorship. Very cool. It's very organic. It feels very, very interesting that it works that way, you know? Hostile units near territory. A little bit of combat going on. Operation. Man, they're just hitting me with ghost markets over and over and over again. It's quite difficult to deal with. <laughs> so many ghost markets. I like how I can run away with my units and uh, then turn around and shoot. It's kind of fun that you can... There is a little bit of micro, like there's not a huge amount of micro potential, but at the very least, like focus firing is worth doing and stuff like that. Um, I can do an infiltration cell on these guys. Let's do it. Other than that, though, I gotta just wait. We're waiting. America, uh, I guess I could get the fuel thing going. And Dalawa, we could expand it. We have the crafts workshop. I don't need manpower. I don't need fuel. We could make a wind trap. You know what I need? I need to go to my capital. And here's the wind guarantee. Oh, I never finished the recycling vats. I'm literally about to finish it now. Whoops. <laughs> um, inactive harvester. Let's go ahead and get that boy deployed. Mission setup. Ooh, this was the infiltration cells. So I can spend 100 intel and have a 50% chance of getting captured, or I can spend influence. Uh, yeah, let's spend influence. Maybe that'll be, a bit, it could be, you know, we could go poorly if we did it that way. So we did get water trade. That's good. We could build that final building and what happened? Oh, all charters were revoked. Hmm, we lost by a hair. We lost by a hair, so that crippled my hedge money. That's okay, what I'll do now is my backup plan is to get the recycling vats and build water production buildings where it makes sense. My hedge money will continue. This is only a temporary setback, but it was like a very clutch setback by the AI, to be fair. 58 days to research some of these things. Wow, really, it does, um, it does slow you down. Oh, I did not see this rebellion here. Uh, let's go ahead and deploy troops. But I can no longer build lands rad, but I, ha I get to keep the ones that I have at least. So that's okay, I guess. Yeah, I'm worried about this. There's not a whole lot of time left. Now, they are regenerating. Um, my troops are regenerating thanks to the support drone, but I can't really afford... My water is crippled here. A little bit of a water shortage. And actually, speaking of water shortages... Man, Plascrete, you actually need to build a Plascrete factory in every zone. Like, that's what it feels like. It's so... Your your empire is so Plascrete hungry, it's insane. Like, ridiculously insane. Oh, I guess my support drone died? That's unfortunate. Built another one, I guess. I'm not sure how it died, I must have missed it. Oh man, I'm being targeted by serious operations. Like, they are... I am being targeted. <laughs> Like, super hardcore. Uh, I can at least spend my manpower to upgrade this harvester when it goes out. So proximity infiltration gets me another step on the way to assassination. Now let's try it, see what happens. Recruit additional agents. That seems pretty straightforward, actually. Just increases the mission duration slightly, not a big deal. Wait, how did I lose this mission? Did I not have tro sufficient troops? Okay. Um, past ownership. Ah, okay, so past ownership of a town actually gives you a better chance to retake it. Um... I really need more troops. Hang on. Let's make a squad. We did just get a new village, and it is the village of Hariel. This is in the Red Chasm. Uh, this is a forward base, so it definitely wants a turret, I feel. Anything that borders my uh, uh, enemies wants to have a turret. Oh, yeah. Attack that village, please. Wait. Why can't I attack? Excuse me? Because it was freed recently. Well, that's annoying. It's really annoying because they just, like, torpedo a, a, a section of my economy. And a, a fairly important one. Like, this was a linchpin area, you know? Ooh. The Fremen have launched a counter-assassination mission against me. A cells purge. Interesting. They captured some of my units. Okay, so there's a whole, like, you know, back and forth you do with regards to, uh, How control and attacking and doing assassination. So assassination isn't just free. It's like, actually, there's like a whole process and a procedure. God, this tanked my economy. Like, really, really did. And there's another rebellion over here in Ultar. Give me a supply drop. Kill this. Where's the rest of my troops? Hold on. These guys here. 
get into the uh, thing so we can get you flown over to here at least. And maybe get you flown up to the uh, to Altar. So I will take uh, these three down to Altar. Oh my goddamn economy! <laughs> they keep murdering my economy. How annoying. Uh, Hoval, let's go ahead and take control. Now, support drones don't do a lot of damage, but I have pulled them out of the city, which helps. Right, these troops also can make their way over to Ultar. Okay, my support drones are being attacked, which is fair enough. Hostile units. The combat ongoing. Let's 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 make sure we have some units deployed over here to Tad Alala. It's just, it's just important enough, I think. Ooh, sandworm problem. Okay, let's get into Ultar. My unit is stuck. Stop running out into the sand, you'll get killed. Wow, okay, we figured out a way to bug the AI, is if you just stand over a cliff with a flying unit, they can't hit you. <laughs> yes. Incredible, already. Already the exploits have been found. Uh, I'm not too worried about any of these. I don't think I want to be judge of the council or speaker of the council anymore. I think I want to save my influence. And basically what I'm doing is chome shares. Get those free points. Village capture failed. Ah. Uh. Now, I think me and Harkonnen are going to have words. I think that's what's going to happen here. Um, so I'm going to get the majority of my forces. There's a raid here too. But it doesn't seem to be coming after me. I, I want to get the majority of my forces down here and see if I can liberate Arnlan and maybe Tabtar. If I could get Tabtar under my control, that's a strategic region. So I'm going to take the majority of these forces and link them up with my carryall here to Dal Alar. Um, and I can actually get sandworm detected. Uh oh, rut row, rut row, raggy. Um, so let's go ahead and clean up. There is a turret that we have to worry about. I think this should be a fairly straightforward combat. Enemy dead, enemy dead. Kill this. Make sure we kill the defensive turret first, because that's like the AOE super damaging thing. And now it's gone. And we can focus on killing the town. Perfect. Uh, I might not be stockpiling enough. Let's stockpile a little bit more. Trade request. Let's get to Ooh. Business. No thanks. No thanks. Unfortunately, Huval uh, has to be rebuilt now. Although we can rebuild it in like the way we want. Like we definitely want a water capture thing here. Um, just for the extra 50 hedge money. So I can liberate it. I can take control. I think taking... I think I've got to liberate this one. Um, and then I'll try to take control of Tabtar instead. Let's make sure that we have a couple of important things here. Let's get uh, gear sabotage and we want a supply drop as well. So that we can lower the enemy's power level and also heal our own troops in combat. So we've got a big hostile push. Let's buy ourselves a turret in the area. So they're coming for a fight, but they only have like basic troopers and gunners and stuff. Looks like he's here to liberate. Well, let's take him out. Oh, my poor ranger is getting focus fired. Let's get him out of the fight. A little bit of micro can save you quite a lot of resources. Let's go ahead and deploy the Chome shares, and we're now 300 points away from winning. So I think, I think if I can get control of Tabtar, I think we win. Or honestly, we just like... We just wait passively, because we're getting those points over time. Oh, there it is! There it is. Perfect. Uh, that was super fun. I really, really enjoy this. Uh, you can choose to keep playing, but I, th I think playing to the victory kind of like... This is my first run, so I feel like I learned so much. Uh, yeah, but this was Dune Spice Wars. Go ahead and check out the link in the description. A uh, huge thank you for uh, Shiro, Shiro Games for sponsoring me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this first look at the game. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.